This program uh, falls under the Department of Sport, Arts, Culture and Recreation. Uh, with this program, we have employed some of the young people who are former students uh, of this program. Mangaoi Strings program. in the sense that it keeps kids focused on something uh, rather than, you know, finding themselves idling and everything. Every child is uh, provided with an instrument which he or she goes home with. The Department of Sport, Arts, Culture and Recreation is responsible for the transportation of these kids to come for tuition at the Music Hall and also when they go to the districts. Kids are collected from different schools to converge in one school where tuition takes place. Once uh, our students matriculate, they get an opportunity to study at the university and then some of them, you know, they've gone to an extent of getting bursaries to study overseas. We have one now, it's now over 10 years, that is permanently residing in the U.S., a former student here. Currently we have four of them who are studying in Europe. One is in Austria, the other one is in Switzerland, and the other one is in Belgium. So this is part of the opportunities uh, that are created by this program, you know, to these kids. Once in a while, uh, the program gets invited to concerts in, in, the, in Europe. Like uh, this year, there's an opportunity for them to go and perform in Austria in August. Today I would like to share with you uh, what the department is doing in terms of youth development in the sector. Uh, the section dealing with uh, extension services has appointed about 326 youth as, as uh, assistant agricultural advisors who are assisting farmers all over the province with extension services. In addition, the department also has got an entrepreneurial development program, of which at present is a two-year program, that one. Uh, the one that I just talked about is a three-month program that the department has uh, introduced. This other one, which is called entrepreneurial development program, is a two-year program that the department has also developed as an incubation for future farmers or entrepreneurs in the value chain of agriculture. At the present moment, the department has got 109 of these uh, 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 future entrepreneurs uh, located all over the free state, of which, again, the bulk of them are women. Uh, they are placed on various farms. They are placed on various uh, uh, agric enterprises all over the free state. The private sector is also involved there, uh, where in this uh, graduate place. Uh, wherein they will get their workplace experience in order to get the necessary skills so that they can start their own enterprises. Again, the department uh, is training various projects in the province, of which uh, we ensure that uh, most of those projects are youth projects. 
in terms of mentorship also the department uh, places uh, or maybe assists uh, these projects to place mentors on their projects and again here the department uh, uh, prioritizes youth projects uh, in terms of assisting with mentorship support to these projects. Learnerships, the department is running two learnerships at, pre at the present moment, one is in Kestel and one is in Kusendal. Agricultural Entrepreneurial Program Graduate. The place is your mode learning under college. I first heard about the program on the newspaper and I heard about it on social media whereby I applied for the position for as an intern. I feel it's a good place to your mode learning to enhance. My, 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 my business as programming require one of the requirements in for an entrepreneur. The department uh, also uh, has got a very, very uh, good program of uh, youth development, which mainly, uh, let me call it, it's a, a push metric uh, 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 program uh, that uh, our youth can come to. Uh, it's a program in the department, and then it's called uh, Structured Agricultural Training. It is a program of the Clan College of Agriculture. As you know, that the, the college is still with the department, it's still under the department. Uh, my reasons for coming to Glen College was to learn more about the agricultural sector, because my aspiration is to become a commercial farmer in the, in the future. And I figured that at best, for you to do what you need to do, you need to obtain the skills that you need to obtain. And there is no shortcut to that. So at least at Lane College, the three-year program in animal production does help you in learning about animal production in the sense of sheep, dairy, poultry, and beef cattle as well. The, the Department of Health in the First State is committed to changing the profile uh, of its employee uh, workforce, uh, especially the, the doctors and the nurses, and we are glad that we are receiving a, a lot of inputs uh, from young doctors. Uh, young doctors, many of them have been taken outside the country, they studied in foreign countries, uh, some of them have studied inside the country, so it's a, it's a, it's a mixed profile. Uh, and, and you are seeing many of them coming up and many of them are completing school now and they coming into the, uh, the many health facilities in the first state uh, to do uh, as medical uh, officers, uh, doing community service and others as medical interns. Um, we, this year, uh, we, we should be by April, have completed employment of about 116, 116 medical officers and about 11 uh, six uh, medical interns. Uh, 95 already uh, have been employed. Uh, in fact, the 95 of them uh, as medical uh, officers uh, for community service uh, have started doing that since January this year. 26 of them will be uh, starting in, uh, uh, in, in about March uh, and, and the rest will be starting in about, in about April. So it's a, it's a, it's a good profile. Uh, we, we're hoping that uh, when, when the youth of our country are seeing them, uh, they will be inspired to take uh, medical, uh, uh, medical professions uh, in various categories uh, because we, we need 
uh, a lot of uh, professionals, qualified professionals that are in the medical fields of different categories. Je <laughs> And to the new Premier, we are really happy to have you and we really hope that you can help us do something about these portals. We appreciate it so much. I appreciate it Create a so I would love for the Premier to attend to our situation because some of the car guards they have to pay instead of they are hired with their qualifications but instead of getting salaries they are asked to be to pay a certain amount so can the Premier maybe attend to that problem and help us out we have a problem with that and I want to ask you, sir, if you please can attend to the condition of our roads by fixing our potholes in Bloemfontein and throughout the province. Thank you. Premier, I'm happy to see you today. 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 I'm happy to I say if you want to go next, next, I say if you want to go more, I say if in terms of law enforcement, I say if you want to go more, 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 I say if you want but you like it to go to the school, and the school is not going to be able to do it. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 I do
our EPWP participants uh, at Hato Primary School um, are doing the under the cleaning and greening sub program. Uh, they are maintaining the cleanliness of the school. Uh, there are about 10 participants there, uh, six ladies and then four guys. So, so, so they are part of our EPWP as the department. They are doing the overall cleaning of the landscaping, the yard of the school, including the application facilities, you know. Uh, and that, you know, the, the deputy principal, when we were talking with the deputy principal and the principal, they, they, they are very excited about that because now that gives now the learners a chance to focus on the, on the learning. Uh, uh, you don't have that thing of the, of the learners cleaning and then also having to take care of, of, of the approaching facilities. There is a dedicated team through our expanded public works participants. So, 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 so they are doing a great job there. Their main work is to make sure that our school is clean, the toilets, the bathrooms, everything is clean. And second to that, they are responsible for, spo uh, for sporting calls like soccer, tennis, cricket, chess. They are doing that after school. So, so our classrooms are clean because of them. So learners don't have to stress about cleaning the classroom because they are here. So they will be cleaning the classrooms after school. Others will be taking them through their pace with regard to sports. EPWP is, is, is rolled out throughout. It has been there. And then I think this one of the school in particular, we've got another one similar uh, in Hilbron. Um, our EPWPs, as they are deployed throughout the province, in the municipalities, in the various other uh, public uh, entities like your hospitals, like your clinics, like your schools, police stations, let's try also to bring in the social compact, you know, uh, they become part of the ecosystem, which is something that uh, we are proud of. It's a partnership, it's a social partnership that we are also proud of, that you find from the Department of Public Works, also from the Department of Education, in this instance of Hato Primary School. So we are also proud of that. We've got, you know, the likes of the plumbers, we've got electricians, and I think over time, we will showcase also those other milestones as we as we as we do our maintenance work and other construction and alterations and refurbishments of, of, of the of, of the public facilities in the in the province. Yeah.
Uh, the premium is getting down, almost here. The taller I become The farther you take my rights away The faster I will run You can deny me You can decide to turn your face away Cause there's something inside so strong I know that I can make it Though you're doing me wrong, so wrong I thought that my pride was gone Oh no Something inside so strong Oh Something inside so strong To hear my voice, the louder I will sing. Yeah. You hide behind walls of Jericho. The lies will come tumbling down. Hey, deny my place and time. You squander wealth that's mine. My life. Will shine so bright it will blind you because there's something inside so small. Hey, hey, I know that I can make it. Though you're doing me wrong, so wrong. You thought that my pride was gone. The Honorable Speaker, Messi Fuba.
to have a moment for prayers and meditations. Thank you, Honorable Members. You may be seated. Honorable members, let me take this opportunity to welcome the Honorable Premier, Mr. Dugwana, the Honorable Members of the Executive Council, the Honorable Deputy Speaker, Nema Bena, the Chairperson of Committees, Honorable Khadebe, the Chief Whip of the Legislature, Honorable Mego, let me also welcome the members of the Executive Council. Let me welcome the members of the Free State Legislature. I would like to also welcome the Deputy Speaker to the National Assembly. I also acknowledge the leadership of traditional House of Traditional Leaders, members of the diplomatic course in our midst, the chairpersons from respective legislatures, the heads of chapter nine and ten institutions, business leaders in our midst, civil society organizations, members of faith-based organizations, members of media houses, all our guests present here today, Sichaba Safrei Stata present here and those following on social media. I welcome you all. Honorable members, in accordance with Rule 11, read with Rule 31 of the Standing Rules and Orders of the Free State Legislature. I have informed this House of the date and time on which the Honorable Premier will present the State of the Province Address, which will also mark the opening of the Free State Legislature. Please note that, in line with the said rule, all proceedings shall then be suspended until the Honorable Premier has delivered his State of the Province Address. This therefore implies that the only business of today shall be the Premier State of the Province Address. Honorable Members, Rules 35 and 32-2A of the Standing Rules and Orders shall accordingly also be suspended to allow the House to sit at 10 today. Honorable members, I then call upon the Honorable Premier to address the House. Speaker of the Legislature, Honorable Members of the Legislature and the Executive Council, Honorable Members of the National Assembly and the NCOP, former Premier Bifis Marshall, former Premier Essie Fran Dombela, Vice President and esteemed members of the Judiciary, the leadership of Salga and our municipality, Provincial Commissioner of SAPS, the Regional Commissioner of Correctional Services, leaders of Chapter 9 institutions, leaders of the African National Congress and the Alliance, leaders of the opposition parties, all our special guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by expressing my gratitude 
for the rare opportunity I have been granted to lead the Free State Province as the President. Let me reiterate what I said on the occasion of my inauguration, that I do not take lightly the responsibility that you have bestowed upon me to serve our people with a great degree of respect, integrity, and devotion. I also wish to heartily thank my predecessor, Mrs. Kurantombela, for having steered the ship since 2018. We are eternally grateful for your great service to the people of our free state, Marona. Allah, Allah, Mrs. Allah, Allah. <clears throat> Let me welcome Mayor Paleo Celestina Makibita, a 90 year old lady whom government recently built a house. Mayor Makibita made a request to government to build a house during the 2021 local government elections campaign. She joins many who have benefited from our national housing scheme to restore the dignity of our people. We are also joined by Ritubeti Kagalikwala, Tonolofato Kaunui, Urufile Mujatau, Munnemang Raushi, and Kate Omeketi who will be traveling to Colombia to compete at the youth development program called Miss Pure Sparkle International Beauty Pageant. Wish you well as we embark on this journey. We also take this opportunity to salute the Proteus Women's National Team for reaching the T20 Cricket World Cup final. Today, as we did before, we have claimed our rightful space on the table of equals, and this shall be recorded in the annals of history. We are also proud to have in our midst Memutakumang Tato Mutaman, a police officer from Silosisha Police Station. This young lady made our province proud for winning the Lorette Award at the at South African Police Service National Excellence. We deliver this state of the province address <coughs> under tremendous pressure and the challenges that beset our province. Some of these challenges are historic, flowing from our colonial and apartheid past. Others are due to our subjective and objective failures as government. Recently, our people began a penetrating dialogue with government about the quality of service delivery. They convey their discomfort with the overall pace of transformation. To address this, we call on our people to become agents of change and put their energies at the disposal of communities. We urge them to support our efforts to combat corruption, malfeasance, and maladministration. Today marks the beginning of the end of such an era. The period ahead will be characterized by courage and decisive action to set the free state on a new path of development. This will involve a focused recruitment of capable public servants to transform our ideals into pragmatic action. In the next 14 months, we shall take decisive action make the free state a province of choice. We will live a rage on our location at the heart of South Africa, a reality upon which our development must be based. In, the, the, in South Africa, free state is centered right in the center, in the middle. It looks like a being. It is a kitten, shaped like a kitten. We all know the function of a kidney. If the kidney is not functioning well, the whole body falls sick. And this is the case with South Africa. If our economy in the free state, if we are not doing our part in the free state, the whole body, the whole South Africa suffers. And that is why uh, the free state has to get its house in order for South Africa to be okay. Our single biggest task is to ensure that our people live in quality houses, their children play and learn in safe environments. 
Our healthcare provides quality services, and every person has equal access to opportunity. This marks the final year of this Executive Council's administration in government. This year will therefore not be the same. We need a renewed sense of drive and purpose. We need to focus on things that unite us and not divide us, and to realize our strength and endless of possibilities. For us, to achieve this, we need to do what Thomas Sankara once directed. You cannot carry out fundamental change without a certain degree of madness. In this case, it comes from nonconformity, the courage to, to turn your back on the old formulas and the courage to invent the future, unquote. Honorable Speaker, the past few years have challenged the free state on multiple levels. We have witnessed the impact of COVID-19 and the resultant economic slowdown. The high unemployment rate, persistent poverty, and the escalating cost of living. To deal with these challenges, we have embarked on a decisive path of recovery. The free state official and employment rate declined from 38.1% in the third quarter of 2021 to 33.8% uh, in the third quarter of 2020. We have developed 11 economy sector master plans and we are now reviewing the free state growth and development strategy. This will deepen our initiative to create an enabling environment for inclusive growth, investment attraction, economic transformation, and job creation. We have created 50,000 job opportunities through the expanded public works program across the three spheres of government, thereby exceeding our 2022 commitment. Of this number, the Community Works Program contributed 26,871 job opportunities. The composition of the participants of these job opportunities is aligned to our stated priority of designated groups as 36,839 beneficiaries were women, while 17,197 were youth and 407 were persons with disabilities. One of the key drivers of economic growth and job creation is our small and medium enterprises. In the current financial year, 869 enterprises were provided with financial and non-financial support, of which 472 were youth-owned. Free State Development Corporation provided financial support to 24 small and medium enterprises including eight youth-owned contractor development program uh, business. We will undertake a substantial review of the current state of our public entities and reposition them to be proactive in responsive to the investment and development needs of the free state. The revitalization of our industrial parks is another key enabler of provincial economy. Our priority areas remain Botabelo, Utadi Chaba, and Tabanji. This program is catalytic to unlock job creation as 3,986 people are now employed in this industrial park. Malutia Pofun Special Economic Zone continues to offer multiple investment opportunities. Right now, the Special Economic Zone as a pipeline of 12 investors worth over 2 billion rand. Over the next few months, we anticipate to conclude new agreements with private sector investment in the cement and concrete and textile and dry powder food manufacturing sectors. Three investments will add 437 jobs with 127 people already employed as a special economic zone. Honorable Speaker, the legislature is currently considering two 
key pieces of legislation, namely the Free State Integrated Local Economic Development and Transformation and the Free State Gambling and Liquor Tourism Authority Amendment that will advance the economic transformation and growth trajectory of Free State Tourism sector holds the potential to create jobs, stimulate growth, and drive investment. It will increase our tourism market share through destination marketing, product development, and promotion. Free State has always private, prided itself on its agricultural sector and its contribution to the provincial economic activity. The sector comprises of 4,500 commercial agricultural entities and employed in excess of 73,000 workers in 2021. It is a critical driver of job creation. There are new emerging opportunities in this sector through production that will be explored in the free state, in the eastern free state. The thriving agricultural sector is dependent on the safety and security of farmers and farm workers as well as the security of tenure of farm workers. A brief reflection on the crime statistics for the period April to December 2022 compared to the same period in 2021 show that the Free State contributed 12 cases out of the 38 national number of cases reported in respect of stock theft and incidents on farms. Notwithstanding the reported reduction of 4.8% in respect of stock theft when compared to the same period in the previous year, this category of crime must remain a particular focus area as we intensify our cooperation with all stakeholders to improve the safety and security in our rural areas. A number of farm workers are, in, are employed, are in employment of an unspecified duration and remain the most vulnerable to illegal or constructive practices. We will continue to actively support the various established mechanisms to deal with farm evictions, particularly the timely resolution of disputes to mitigate against the human rights abuse and unjust socio-economic consequences of illegal employment. In June 2022, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development reported that from inception of the tenure acquisition program to March 2022, 139 farms were acquired in the state. The audit of unused and underutilized land owned by the provincial government must be finalized to enable the provincial government to make land available for redistribution. Whilst continuing our support of commercial farmers, our Rehaba Gadi Ratswana food security program benefited more than 700 households in the past year. These households were supported with various agricultural essentials meant to ed eradicate food this program will be supplemented by a new concept, the production brigade we are exploring with the Ministry of Defense and Military Veterans and the South African National Defense Force. The program will focus on, on agricultural products such as green produce, red and white meat, and full value chain of opportunities related to agriculture uh, uh, products. We we are very careful, honorable speaker, that uh, while we might have abundance of food, but there comes a time when we'll have scarcity. And therefore, food security is a key issue. And the free state must center itself in ensuring that it creates food banks to make sure that when times arrives and that need comes, the government is able to provide. The opportunities for youth in agriculture during the current financial year included some of the following. 
employment of 510 unemployed graduates who now provide farming extension services, 220 bin jobs opportunities focusing on the eradication of invaded alien species was created through the Agricultural Land Care Program. This benefited 97 women and 105 men. 55 million rand supported various youth development programs, including various on and off farm activities. Honorable Sir, the growth and prosperity of the Free State is dependent on the quality of our infrastructure. Now, some progress has been made with expansion and upgrading of infrastructure, we have not consistently kept up with the required new standards. It is time for a fundamental and comprehensive rethink of the way in which we plan and implement our infrastructure investment. We have initiated a process that will ensure that we create a fair, competitive, and transparent process at every stage to maximize the value we gain from infrastructure investment whilst closing out the internal and external synergies that have bedeviled the infrastructure environment. Within this reconceptualization, we will equally ensure that the set aside for women and youth and persons with disabilities are implemented without fail. We are pleased with the 25 major infrastructure projects with an estimated value of over 138 billion rands that have been registered with Infrastructure South Africa. These projects are in the human settlements, energy, water and sanitation, transport and social infrastructure sectors. Two of the strategic integrated projects in the transport sector, namely upgrade of the national route from Fentersburg to Kronstadt and the upgrade of the Windberg interchange have been completed. The Vista Park 2 and 3 project, which will yield 4,500 housing opportunity, the opportunities is under construction. Other projects include the Maluti Apofung Alternative Energy Solution to construct solar plants in the Kwakwa and Tiame, and the electricity upgrade and remedial work to improve the network in the area. Both of these projects are currently in the pre feasibility stage. And complete the Mangaung Airport Development Node project, valued at over 10 billion rand, will provide residential units, retail areas, conference facilities, office space, and a hotel. The project is now at feasibility stage. There is the Sassol Beck Integrated and Mixed Housing Development Project valued at over 8 billion rand. This project will integrate Sassol Beck and Van der Bale Park as part of the envisaged Val River city region between two towns. This project is in the, in the structuring and design stage. The multi-billion rand Virginia gas project by Renegade is beginning to change our economic fortunes in this region. A feasibility study will be undertaken for the creation of a special economic zone to maximize beneficiation from the gas extraction and the related industrial in the Virginia area. Kabanchu smelter currently under construction will change the economic landscape of this area. This project with an estimated value of 300 million rand, will create 2,000 permanent jobs when completed around the first quarter of the new financial year. The conclusion of a memorandum of agreement with the Development Bank of South Africa continues to enhance our project planning management and implementation capacity. Partnership with the DBSA has resulted in the increased infrastructure coordination capacity in the office of the Premier. The DISTIA is supported with the renovation of Philip Sanders and Stadfontaine Resorts. The Department of Human Settlement has concluded an agreement with DBSA for the eradication 
of inappropriate structures. Honorable Speaker, we have developed a social compact that provides for a shared commitment between government and the people of the free state. Consultation processes using a combination of the district development model approach and sector-specific consultations will be used to finalize the social compact. Our sector-specific consultations will include an investment and infrastructure conference, a mining in Daba, and a creative sector convention during the course of this year. The ravages of climate change leave no doubt that sustainability, conservation, and efficiency are pathways to the future. We continue to work with the international labor organization to determine opportunities and challenges to address climate change. We have established an energy security command center coordinated by the COPTA and all relevant stakeholders such as ESCOM, MISA, Department of Water and Sanitation, and National and Provincial Department. The command center will coordinate and implement the provincial response plan on the energy security. This includes the provision of generators to hospitals by the Department of Health. We are part of the Integrated Resource Efficiency Program to reduce electricity and water consumption through various measures at government buildings and schools. Honorable Speaker, the Free State is blessed with natural resources that include gold, diamond, salt, and sand with a huge potential to transform our economy. Recent discoveries of natural gas, helium, serve as a motivation for us to collaborate with the Council of Geoscience to remap provincial natural resources. The ongoing work with the Department of Mineral Resources to support small-scale miners will continue. The award of mining permits to artisanal miners will be pursued. This intervention will help to curb illegal mining activities and will usher in a new dawn in this industry in the province. The deteriorating state of our road infrastructure is a stumbling block for economic development. While we will spend approximately 1.9 billion rands on upgrading and maintaining our road infrastructure this year, it is imperative that we change the ways and means in which road service delivery happens. International best practices have shown that the maintenance and construction backlog of our roads that form the backbone of logistic industry and support economic activity, such as the roads in the Fixburg and Botterville area. Work in this regard has already commenced with an allocation of 1 billion rand for the prioritization of the following road. Lady Brand, Bethlehem, that is the R26 road, the Fixburg, Rosenthal, the R70 road, we must find innovative ways to shorten the time frames, find resources solutions, and improve the efficiency of our service delivery. Our investment in the road infrastructure in the next financial year will comprise of the following. 771 million rands in Tabomkutanyana, 220 million rands in Fezile Dabi, 217 million rands in Kharib, 165 million rands in Mangawu, 125 million rands in Lejuele. During the current financial year, the Township Revitalization Program focused on the upgrading of gravel to, to pave roads and created, uh, it created 400 jobs. The focus has been on the township roads in 14 townships. Nine of these projects will be completed at the end of March, and the remaining road will be completed at the end of May. This program is shifting to the Department of Community Safety, Roads and Transport in the Department. The next phase of the program will focus on township roads in Kwakwa, Bethlehem, Lumpontein, Butabelo, Tabancho, Sasolbeck, Kronstadt, Fixbeck, Erismith, Lady Brent, and Paul Road. Current projects include Frankfurt, 
Bridge to Quelling, first up to Bloemfontein, Lekhoff to Havenga, Westbridge Access Road, and the R30 Allen Ridge. These projects are being closely monitored for successful completion. An amount of 255 million rand is available for the completion of these projects. A specific intervention will be implemented to deal with all delayed and stalled road infrastructure projects. An amount of 150 million is budgeted for the rig reveling program in all five districts. We are enhancing our Operation Valazonga initiative to eradicate potholes. Our focus must be multi pronged, include the private sector and the rebuilding of capacity within the public sector. We will draw on the capacity developed through various contractor uh, development programs to accelerate the expansion of the repair of potholes in our municipal spaces. Municipalities will be required to develop, fund, and implement pothole eradication, eradication programs. Honorable Speaker, Our social protection programs are a reflection of a caring town. Our social safety net is a conduit to economic inclusion, poverty, elevation, but most importantly, improved quality of life. Of the 2.9 million population of the free state, one, people, one million people are receiving social grants. Most beneficiaries are recipients of child support grants, followed by the elderly and persons living with children. <laughs> Community nutrition development centers are committed to ensure access to safe and nutritious food. We will continue to provide access to food and developmental programs to 7,406 poor and vulnerable persons who benefit on a daily basis from our 55 centers in the province. Three of these centers were established in collaboration with traditional leadership. Last year, we committed to retain 92 social work graduate interns who were appointed as part of COVID-19 intervention. These interns have uh, cases which resulted in imprisonment of 20 years and longer. We are on course to implement the gender-based violence and femicide national strategic plan. Psychosocial support is provided through our Tutuzela care centers, safe houses, shelters, and victim-friendly centers. In August last year, a newly built gender-based violence care center was launched in Kwakwa and is now operational. This year, we will open a safe house in Butabelo and a gender-based and femicide shelter in Honorable Speaker. The Early Childhood Development Function now resides under the Department of Education and continues to promote school readiness of children. 1,443 ECD sites are funded by the Department of Education. Our education achievements remain impressive. We take pride in our number one position 
as the leading province in the country with an 88.5% grade 12 pass rate in that territory. We have uh, maintained a grade 12 pass rate above 80% from 2019. We are also the top performer in a number of subjects, including accounting, business studies, geography, economics, and history. And I said yesterday that this is actually because in Tadema, or rather the subject is in uh, business studies, economics, and accounting. And they are reflect as well already. I say a high weight guy. Be over all that that I'm of Malamodai than science elemente. At that time, we I change a little more. We are confident that we will maintain this position. Must express our appreciation to the broader education family. Our success is rooted in the collective effort of our educators, learners, parents. SGPs, unions, private sector, and NGOs. These outcomes are supported by the school nutrition program that enhances learning and teaching in schools. The proportion of learners who benefited from this program increased from 51.4% in 2009 to 84.2% in 2021 and will be extended to 600,000 176 learners this year. The Presidential Youth Employment Initiative has made a substantial impact on youth unemployment. Phases two and three of the program resulted in 15,309 youth being placed in the department. Phase four of the project will accommodate 15,500 youth. Of these, 6,200 had already started in February 2023, and the remaining 9,300 will commence on the 1st of May 2023. This program has helped us to reclaim curriculum losses and to address the infrastructure challenges of our schools, including the maintenance of school grounds. Learners with barriers are also supported through this program. We are continuing to expand our fourth industrial revolution program in schools to meet the challenges of the future. The department is committed to support 4,791 grade eight and 3,632 grade nine learners in equipping them with coding and robotics skills. The 23 secondary schools that offer coding and robotics will be supported to become fully equipped coding and robotics schools in the future. We continue to place high value on the delivery of quality education infrastructure. During the past year, we have completed the, re the reconstruction of the 30 schools that form part of the RCD program, Accelerated School Infrastructure Development Initiative, that is, these schools were built with inappropriate materials Pre 1994. 11 new schools are currently under construction in the province. Tromsberg Special School in Harib, Kolo Primary School in Motewo, Arbeis Hanuot Primary School in Motewo, Matlafalang Primary School in Motewo, Heto Primary School in Lejueliputwa, Malibuho Primary School in Lejueliputwa, Morena Tuisi Primary School in Tabo Mukitanyana, Paul, Paul Fontaine Primary School in Tabo Mukitanyana, Dr. Sello Primary School in Fezile Dabi, Katla Mpumelelo Primary School in Fezile Dabi, Father Baling Primary School in Fezile Dabi. Construction of two new primary schools, Bergman Primary School in Mutewo and Thibo Uluazi Secondary School in Fezile Dabi will commence this year. Dr. Block Secondary School in Mutewo will also be reconstructed. Through the Farm School Initiative, the construction of a new girls' hostel at Dr. Block's Secondary School was completed. Two hostels at Level Nain, Special School in Lijueliputwa, and Breda Primary School are now under construction. 
Prioritizing school safety will require collaboration between the SAPS with designated patrols to schools, school management, SGBs, and school safety communities. School must be weapon-free and drug-free. Our commitment to increase investment in training and skill development is evident in our bursary program. Every year, we award bursaries to the top 100 grade 12 learners in the province to start at local universities. From 2009 to 2022, 1,225 international and 10,988 local bursaries were awarded to young people. Our work with the CITAS have led to the provision of 4,389 internship, learnership, and apprenticeship uh, opportunities for young people since 2019. We will convene a provincial skills development conference with all the CITAS during August to enhance our initiatives to maximize our skills development program. We continue, Madam Speaker, to collaborate with the Central University of, Te of Technology, the University of the Free State and Mutewa Tivet College on various medium-term strategic uh, framework priorities. The provision of safe human settlement is not only about providing dignified shelter to our people, but it speaks directly to the restoration of their dignity, sustainable livelihood, and security of tenure. Our main priorities for the year include the following. Completing the 11,000 incomplete houses and resolving the block projects in partnership with the National Home Builders Registration Council. Accelerating integrated housing through the revival of the Pakisa Mega and the Quagua Gateway projects and completing the Vista Park Residential Project. Intensifying social facilitation within our informal settlements, we are pleased to announce that pro progress has been made with the long outstanding land transfer for the resettlement of the Pambili community near Jacobstown. Embarking on alternative building technologies within our settlements that were identified as emergency areas is very clear. And blocking the challenges relating to FLIPS program, we have embarked on a process to acquire inner city uh, properties in major urban centers to provide affordable rental housing. This process entailed the acquisition of vacant land, lapidated buildings, and existing buildings in the inner cities for repurposing. This will advance our spatial transformation agenda. We are working with the Development Bank of Southern Africa as an implementing agent for the removal and replacement of asbestos roofing in about 36,000 houses across the province. Another priority remains the upgrading of the registered 166 informal settlements. The improvement package includes the provision of basic services access to amenities, and security of tenure. A campaign to accelerate the issuing of title deeds will commence next month to ensure the security of tenure for homeowners. Our people have suffered the indignity of the bucket system for far too long. The state of sanitation in many of our towns requires us to put in place urgent intervention measures. A progress report compiled in August 2020 function. This project will, over time, be rolled out to other towns across the province. Rokutisa, Siriti, Sabato, Abo, Aboru. We will direct the Mangau Metropolitan Municipality to address the sanitation challenges, particularly in Butabel. We will not allow ourselves be paralyzed by those who want to only benefit. And there is money allocated for this project, but uh, we do not do what we are supposed to do, so that we allow those who are using the honeysuckers the opportunity to continue 
feeding on the poor when we should be focusing in eradicating uh, this uh, scourge of where we have money allocated but because of our inability to make decisions the people in the area are still suffering and we will not tolerate this this must come to Government has equally prioritized dysfunctional wastewater treatment plants. Work has already commenced at the wastewater treatment plant in Machabe and will soon commence in Maludapofu. Our prosperity is dependent on the provision and quality of our healthcare facilities and services. There will be renewed focus to strengthen our primary healthcare facilities and services, including specifically pre- and antenatal care. This will be achieved through reducing queues at primary health care facilities through the use of alternative chronic medication distribution channels. In our more than 70 years, we have ke Maria ke hlabula ka bo forotloko batho ba bagolo ba fotse mela ba emetse o fumantswa thuso o godisa seriti sa batho ba rona re tlamele ho etsa ka tsela yengwe me ke yengwe ya ditsela tse o tlamele ho di fetse increasing the immunization coverage for children between 6 and months and 15 years Expanding the rollout of uh, session doctors at primary health care facilities, outreach by district health, health services to primary health care facilities, this re-engineering of health care service, service delivery will result in doctors from district level attending to clinics. The refurbishment and expansion of clinic infrastructure for the implementation of the national health insurance resourcing uh, clinics with human capital, equipment, medicine, and consumables. In the case of the clinic in Zarona, the hospital in Zarona, the department is in the same way, and the department is in the same way. In collaboration with the government, the government is in the same way, and the government is in the same way, and the government is in osnatlokalo there are currently three facilities that operate on a 24-hour basis, namely Mangawu University, a community partnership project in Bloemfontein, PEX in Filoskron, and the Winnie Mandela Clinic in Motabelo. It is envisaged that the new community health care uh, center to be constructed in Eidadal will also operate on a 24-hour basis. The remainder of our clinics operate on an extended 12-hour basis. We will conclude an efficiency review of these extended hours within the next three months. This will inform further expansion of our 24-hour facilities. Regataba, Ofumana di clinic is a rona di bulwa na gwetelele. Yabu shokwa, tavele zena di bulwa na gwetelele. Adi tavele zena di kafogotwa, wabula di clinic ina gwetelele. <laughs> we continue to invest in the human capital available in the health sector. In the last year, we increased our capacity with various clinical appointments, including 22 medical officers, 500 professional nurses, 24 pharmacists, and 12 social workers. 
the 2003 community health care workers contracted as part of the COVID-19 response have been retained to provide integrated community health care. We are rolling out a patient information system to improve patient care, revenue generation, and mitigate against medical legal exposure. The digitization of patient records, which is currently being implemented at the National District Hospital, will be extended to 10 other hospitals in the 2023-24 financial year. 150 young unemployed ICT graduates will be recruited to implement the digitization of patient records. Our investment in the health infrastructure includes the refurbishment of the following facilities. Bongani Hospital Nursing School Campus, Mufumahadi Manapo Mupedi Nursing School, Free State School of Nursing Campus at Bongani Regional Hospital, Albert Zula Orthopedic and Tusano Maternity Service Operation District Hospital Theatres, Maternity Ward at Pilonomi Tertiary Hospital. Seven healthcare projects were completed in the current financial year, namely Mafube Hospital Upgrade. Ophthalmology and Optometry Unit at the National District Hospital, Doctor's Accommodation at Butabelo Hospital, Pilon Clinic Refurbishment, Siadimo Clinic Upgrade, Vitumelo Clinic Refurbishment, Winberg Hospital New Boiler, and the following new project will start in the 2023-24 financial year. Kabin Regional Hospital Smart Revitalization in Bethlehem, construction of new Dinane Clinic in Tabanchu, construction of new Val, Val Rock Clinic in Winnie Mandela, construction of new Bupilong Clinic in Kronstadt, and the upgrade of JD Newberry Hospital in Klokolan, the upgrade of Lesedi Clinic in Harry Smith, the new Harib Dam Clinic in Harib. Honorable Speaker, beyond bridging our racial divide, our social cohesion programs are intended to foster unity and diversity. They form the basis for a life more fulfilling, a life more inclusive, and a life worth living. The racist attack of Kokong Nakedi and Brian Nakedi Jr. at the Master Sport Resort on the 25th of December last year is a reminder that some of us are still frozen in time and prisoners of our past. We condemn this abhorrent incident. Perpetrators of these acts must be reminded that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, and racism will not be tolerated. The arts, culture, heritage, sports, and recreation landscape of the free state offers endless possibilities for the individual and collective pursuit of talent and passion. We need to create an enabling environment within which our group program find expression. Processes advanced to establish a provincial film commission this year as part of the effort to create a thriving creative industry. We must leverage off this opportunity to develop the value chain of this sector, particularly the technical and related industry. 2022 Mangawung African Cultural Festival continue to provide an opportunity for 145 local artists to participate in the homebrew development program. We will reimagine this festival, drive culture, arts, heritage, and economic growth with a focus on local artists. This will include re uh, revisiting the funding model to ensure it's self-sustainable. We will convene the Creative Industry Convention to explore economic opportunities presented by this sector by creating a unique homebrew talent. We will unleash, unleash the talent and entrepreneurial potential of our artists and, and link talent with opportunities. Our focus will be on the whole spectrum of this industry that includes the performing arts, visual arts, craft, and skills development. Reclamino Felisa movement wa banabaro na banale talente 
hore ba tle ba hore ba tle ba bonwe o tlamile ba ye di province ntse di mpele hore ba tube di province ntse di mpele ba ka tla ba ka tla haye me re tlamilo etsa ka bogohle hore re supporta re promota ka hohle talente teng ka haro fresh data especially bana ba ba rona ba bontsha mbogoni bono re ba thuse ka bogohle hohle hore le bona ba tle ba developele talente ya bona kwa ano ba tle ba yetse le bona eh maphelo a bona go bana a se ka o fela re ka ya ndikolong ra ba di doctor ra ba di engineers bana ba rona modimo ba file talente be re tlamile ho yetsa bonete ba hore talente yeno ya matlafatswa ya bona be ya thuswa hore tswele pele le bona ba tle ba iphibise ka se modimo ba file Our support to the sport and recreation sector continue to find expression in various programs, including the Batukada Soccer Tournament, Kasi World Cup, Mangawu United Football Club, Sports Council and Boxing Tournament. Support system e ba e ba tla hala bana ba rona ba la hlaya tsele talente tsa bona di fela pele ona ko be re tla mele ho etsa jwalo eh se tlogolo sa me mantombela eh ke moshimane ya talente te ke la ka kopana le yana matsetse a mabedi a fitileng le me wa haye ana le ba bana bana ba itukisetsa ona tsatsi le ona ra tsa ma be ke go rona hore bana ba jwalo hore ba support ka bohlo ke ho rona hore a re ba support fela ka challenge re ba support ka dintho tse ngata tse ba di hloka hore re develop e di bokgoni ka hara province o ba le di 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 sports doctors di psychologist ka ho fela hore bana ba rona ba tle ba tsebe go tswela pele ke 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 ra dula re re bora talent tse di nka ntle bo ronaldo bo ma em ba bana ba rona bana le talent we applaud the Department of Education's introduction of Magnificent Wednesdays, which has resulted in the revival of school sports. The Department of Sport, Arts, Culture and Recreation supported the school sport initiative through sport equipment and attire to 75 schools. <laughs> Babapala, Kadi Toy na Kwetele, Embarga Faba Navarona, or Batleba Kumanemu Yeta Baba Palakante, or Labona Mutolo, Watuelo Pele. Our investment in sports infrastructure will manifest in the continued construction of indoor sports centers in Kronstadt, Smithfield, and Frankfurt. Honorable Speaker, the Free State Crime Statistics for the period April 22, 2022 to December 2022. When compared to the same period in 2021-2022, shows an increase. This is ascribed to the lifting of the lockdown confinement measures that were in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Illicit mining and damage to critical infrastructure remain a concern in the province. From July 2022 to January 2023, a dedicated team dealt specifically with illicit mining, a total number of 5,260 arrests were made. We, encar we encourage the Department of Home Affairs, the SAPS, and other stakeholders to escalate the implementation of a program focusing on undocumented foreign nationals. Of concern is the fact that drug-related arrests in the Free State increased by 41.8% when compared with the same period in the previous years, in Agafela, Elibile, Osota, do destroy our people, our Navarro. Regababa to Adibajuang, Arasa Togomele, the future. These statistics motivate us to prioritize the finalization of the provincial integrated crime and violence prevention strategy. We commend the SAPS for the work that they are doing, often in very challenging circumstances. Community for policing forums, 
will be strengthened to work with the SAPS to combat crime in our communities. We have experienced the painful truth that fraud and corruption are not victimless crimes, systems and processes. Our human resource capacity falls short of expectations and requirements. We will establish a new fraud and corruption task team that will bring together key stakeholders such as the Office of the Auditor General, the Public Protector, the Public Service Commission, the Criminal Justice System, and key provincial departments such as the Office of the Premier, Provincial Treasury, and COCTA to drive the anti-corruption program of government. We have noted that various investigations across provincial departments were ongoing at the conclusion of the previous PFMA audit cycle. These investigations must be brought to finalization and recommendations be implemented. Forensic investigations will be commissioned into various human settlement projects, including G hostels, in the Silver and Dark City, as well as the Caleb Mutabi development in Mangawu. The provincial government prioritized as the breeding ground for corruption. Bao ba la gatang ho ba bo ra khwebo ba o ile mo ra khwebo ba nne munyetla o teng kwa no province ya Botswana empa bao bao ba na hana ho re ba tla ithuisa at the expense of our own people praise tata ha isa le sebaka sa o bapala honorable speaker a capable, ethical, and developmental state is important for us to create an effective, transparent, and accountable public service. It has become abundantly clear that there is an urgent need to conduct skills audit throughout the province and local government sector. chief <laughs> director Anale N6 Fela. Retame Abafman Chamusebe by Yen Abasa Sebele. Embagi Pashin a little rato lao lao sen. Eta eta hore. Public service. Yaro naibe hante. Enwegeba to bao barring Abahirilwe. Babana hana hore. Gimunye tao yeta hore be hai. Balata di family, baeta joalo di family, wata alamo. Dozena of the public sector. An intensive skill audit and realignment process will therefore unfold as a matter of urgency. We must direct our focus to the basic service delivery imperatives, reliable and clean water supply, proper and decent sanitation services, regular refuse removal, decent roads, as well as the creation of an enabling environment for job creation. Madam Speaker, Kidula Ribek start. For Nagwengata, Meti Afela, Habitin Ribek starter. Me Hobona Haleti, Hobona Halang, Majoro Fumani Hore, Batuba Basibiza and Basibiza Bush. Ba Amea Matata Ana, Afumanuang, Kiri Community. Batubana Babesa Hana Lidi Valve. Orefela Bate Batebe of Mana Over. Imban Toseli Dieta and Diaswabis. Mereta Melo di Chalagamate. Imba Batubano Batlamelo of Mana. Me Bakoso Hang Hang. Baba and the Baeta di Gitesena. Our fan. Baba Shebile Hore. Bateba Ikete Chalete. This spending in the past year enabled the creation of 1,839 temporary jobs, of which 553 were women beneficiaries. Municipalities will be required to ensure that 10% of MIG expenditure is allocated to maintenance of infrastructure. Municipalities will be supported by COCTA and the process. We will assist municipalities to improve the functionality of municipal planning tribunals 
in order to expedite development application. We'll also review administrative processes and remove red tapes, which is a stumbling block to the east. By April this year, second generation one plans will be completed. We will institutionalize the district development model to embed the implementation of one plans and cooperative governance. The Jaga Spontane Mine disaster has impressed upon us the necessity to improve our disaster management capacity. Our capacity must be improved through a comprehensive approach that encompasses our infrastructure, our planning, resourcing, as well as our coordination and cooperation with other governmental and non-governmental institutions. We are allocating 30 million over the MTF period to improve this capacity. Municipal disaster management plans must be reviewed and include an assessment of the resilience of the infrastructure against extreme climatic events. Honorable Speaker, successful service delivery at provincial government level also requires an improvement in professionalization. Doing so will entail the implementation of the national framework towards the professionalization of the public sector. We appreciate the selfless service of committed government officials who execute their duties and responsibilities. They need to take the people along with their support will continue to traverse the path of development in our endless pursuit of a Thank you, Honorable Premier. Honorable Members, allow me to acknowledge our Free State NCOP delegates that are here today and also further acknowledge the former Premier of the Free State, Mercy Sindombela. And also, I've left out the Police Commissioner and her entourage. We acknowledge them. The leadership of political parties represented in the legislature that are here with us, we acknowledge you the former members of the Free State Legislature, the mayors amongst us and the speaker, that everyone should remain standing as the sergeant arms, the Honorable Premier and the Speaker leave the House, that the guests should remain at their seats while the Honorable Members have the gold tag. They are the ones who will be going to uh, Dr. Murlimela Stadium, and the ones with the blue tags will remain here in the precinct. Honorable members, there will also be a briefing in the media room and a group photo that will be taken, will be the debate on SOPA. Thank you, honorable members. The House is adjourned.